In this video, I wanna show you how you can use Tabular Editor to make your life a lot easier when it comes to data modeling with Power BI. We're gonna go through where to download, how to install, how to navigate around it with a few examples. We're also gonna to touch on when and why you should be using it and also what to watch out for when it comes to using the external editor. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we're focused on teaching beginners the wonderful world that is Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So where do you download the tabular editor? So this is the site that you can download tabular editor from. It's quite easy, tabulareditor.com. And you click download, it will take you to a GitHub, which uh, links to the latest version of the tabular editor. At the moment, we're at 2.14.2, but it can be different, uh, depends on uh, what the latest version is. If you scroll to the very bottom, you will find different assets that you can download. Um, but what you want to download is the MSI. This is the installer file that you will need to use if you're using Windows. If you click on that, uh, download, um, and if you double click on it, it works exactly like a normal application. Um, it will uh, give you some instructions, you go hit next, um, and once it's installed, you want to refresh your Power BI desktop, and when it's refreshed, you will see you will now have a new ribbon, external tools, and here you will find the tabular editor button. So before we head into the tabular editor, I want to show you what we have in this demo that I've prepared for you today. So in this data model, we have a simple orders table, which has some information about orders, product orders. So groceries, uh, when they were purchased, how many and at what price, and also what cost. Um, so essentially sales information. We have a calendar table which only links to the purchase date. This is to do some time intelligence. And we also have a calculations measures table which houses all of our measures that we use um, for this model. I wanted to show you how the data model works because we're gonna try to use tabular editor to demonstrate how this can make your life a lot easier. Let's go back to the report view and let's hit tabular editor now. So you'll see it gives you a lot of folders on the left hand side, which is what the contents are of your model. So as I said, we have a relationship in uh, one relationship between the calendar and the orders table. You'll see that it's here as well as the tables that we have that I was explaining earlier um, in a different view, but essentially like it's um, uh, this is how it's viewed in the tabular editor when i click on any of the properties you'll see that you have more information about the um, objects metadata so things like uh, you know information like if it's there, if they're hidden or not data categories that's for the table but if we click uh, a column or field you'll see you have some more information there that you normally wouldn't find if you were um, in the just in Power BI desktop. So from the tabular editor itself you can expect to be able to do the things that you would do when you're say creating new measures or calculated columns or new tables um, by just right clicking anywhere really so if we wanted to create let's say a new measure in our calculations table we can do a right click and you can do a create or create a new measure, which will create the, a new measure the same way that you would do in Power BI Desktop, but obviously in Tabular Editor. Let's try to create a new sales. So let's pretend that we didn't have a sales. So we'll name this sales2. And you'll see that you can now create uh, your expression on this text editor here. So if we look at the sales, we can see that you all you have to do is write sum. So it's the sum of unit price against the sum of the quantity. So that's how you get the sales. So you, if we copy that, but we write it by ourselves. So if we write sum, you'll see that it turns blue. That means that it's recognized as a function. We can do the open and close. So if we do a sum of uh, unit price, so we just drag that in, so we don't have to write everything. 
and then close it and then multiply by sum of quantity and if we accept change you will see that you will have now a question mark so that means um, that expression is changed but you still need to save that in order to uh, apply it to your data model. What's pretty cool about this expression editor is that it has a DAX formatter built in so it makes sure that your your DAX code is neatly written or rather it's following a certain structure so that it's easily readable especially when you have a long DAX expression. Uh, for this one it's quite tiny so it, you probably won't see any difference but if I click the format DAX you'll see that it, 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 it tries to you know make your DAX expression a lot readable. If you notice when I was doing the expression editor we don't have the IntelliSense working in this view so that means the the little pop-ups when you're writing your code so kind of suggestions is not here so that means you need to make sure that you know exactly what you're writing uh, because you won't have hints when it comes to writing the, the DAX expression. So how does this translate back into the Power BI desktop? So now that we've created our new measure, Sales2, let's hit File and Save and let's go back to our data model. So now, because we've saved it, you'll see that now we have that measure here, Sales2, like you normally would when you created the measure here, except we did it in Tabular Editor. So you'll see that the measure that we created is here in the calculations measure table. Another reason that you would need to be using tabular editor is to create perspectives for your users when it comes to allowing them to create their own personalized visuals in Power BI. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I created a video on how to allow personalization of visuals in Power BI. And this is what you would use to control what the users can choose when it comes to personalizing their charts and graphs. If you are interested in that kind of topic and how to implement it, uh, check out my previous video on it. So now you have a basic understanding of how to use the tabular editor but I guess now the question is why would you use it in the first place well I guess the first benefit of tabular editor is the fact that you can do bulk editing for your measures normally when you would create measures or you would try to modify measures in Power BI it can tend to be long or rather the, the process takes longer than you normally would uh, you, you, for example, if you wanted to change certain properties for specific measures um, and you want to do it in bulk, you can't do it in Power BI desktop. You have to go through each measure one by one. But in Tabular Editor, you should be able to do it. Um, you, you can multi-select uh, multiple measures or multiple objects and do bulk editing which saves time for your workflow. Let me show you how that works. So if we go back to the Power BI data set that we have, go back to the orders, you will see that the, for example, we have the cost, profit, and sales. Now they are all formatted as a whole number, but we want to format them as currency. Now, normally you would create the currency here. You would say, okay, you would do the pound here, but you, don't want to for example if you had more than that for example you wanted to do the sales month to date or quarter to date you want to do all of those but you don't want to do it one by one uh, that's where the tabular editor comes in so if we go to here for example let's do a control click to select multiple measures so let's select all of these all we have to do from here is add the format string that we want. So it's the pound with two decimal points. If we hit enter and we save it, you'll see that it will now show us the values of those fields in pounds as a currency. I've touched on it earlier already. So the IntelliSense doesn't work on tabular editor. So normally when you type your DAX measures, you would get a bit of pop-up to uh, suggest to you what you can write next. So either a function or a column 
you won't get this in the tabular editor. So when you're typing, you need to make sure that you know exactly what you're typing uh, because you won't get those suggestions, which are really helpful when you are just starting out with your DAX journey. Another thing that you need to be aware of is that the tabular editor is an external tool. So that means um, if there is any corruption with your data model, you are fully responsible for it. So you gotta make sure that when you are using a external editors like tabular editor while it's generally safe to use you want to make sure that you create a copy of your pbix file to make sure you have a backup in case it corrupts your data model somehow anything that you do in tabular editor doesn't get saved until you hit the save button so just make sure that you remember to save before you close the tabular editor so that you see those changes reflected in your power bi data model and that's it for this video I hope that gives you a brief, quick understanding on how to get started with the tabular editor. We didn't cover all the features of the tabular editor, um, but I hope this video still helped some of you guys uh, when getting started with using external tools in Power BI. Leave a like on this video if it helped you. It's the best way to let me know that you enjoy this type of content. Get in touch using the social media links that I included in the description box below. And thank you so much for watching, guys. See you again on the next one.